probably no other organization, probably no other group, know this region better than the people of the Southern Regional Council. I think it's an organization that has courage and that will always have courage to speak out. They were a link between like-thinking Southerners who probably had nobody else to talk to. I could see SRC here 10, 20, 25 years from now. Uh, I look forward to the 100th anniversary. The South is a better place because of what they did and their commitment to see a better South and for us to be an integral part of the United States of America. The Southern Regional Council exists to promote racial justice, protect democratic rights, and to broaden civic participation. And that mission, it drives us towards opening access for all citizens um, in all areas of life. Mitchell, I live in Atlanta, used to work for the Southern Regional Council. That's an old established race relations exit, runs back 35 years. The council, founded in 1919 as the Commission on Interracial Cooperation, has engaged Southern communities on issues of democracy and race for more than eight decades. It's a very meaningful organization to me personally because uh, of the role that my grandfather played. Uh, my grandfather was the first president of the executive committee of the council back in 1944. And, and to be associated with an organization that has seen people come through, like Brad Jordan and John Lewis and Julian Bond and others, is, is, is an honor. I got into the, into the, uh, the civil rights through the Southern Regional Council, you couldn't get a better introduction into the, the real historic sense of civil rights. Men and women, black and white, worked together to end violence, to challenge the all-white primary, to keep the schools open in the 1950s, and to bring new voters onto the rolls in the 60s and 70s. At one time, it was the only biracial or interracial group addressing the problem. You had the NAACP, you had the Urban League, uh, of course, and then you had CORE, uh, and then coming on a little later was SCLC, but biracially, the uh, councils and SRC uh, was the only entity addressing the whole problem. One of the important layers was setting up the councils on human relations throughout the South. And the Southern Regional Council was the one who funded that, assisted in uh, selecting of the directors. I was director of Arkansas Council on Human Relations. All the southern states had councils on human relations affiliated with the Southern Regional Council. SRC was an entree to the foundation world. It was an entree to certain journalists. It was a way station for northern visitors coming south. And SRC people often said, you need to go over there and talk to snakes. So in terms of publicity and publications and PR, they were a really vital link. You always look for the voice of sanity. And that is precisely what the Southern Regional Council was to me. I discovered it in 1947 when I came here. Many of the things that I was seeing happening in my community, they were doing research on it and it would be writ written up in the magazine. Because, I mean, I just read them, I just go through them. And I happened to pick up this one, and they talked about the exact same thing that I had been talking about. And it just did my heart good. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> that the Southern Regional Council has always been a place that's far more than the research it does. It's been a welcome, it's been a home. I became the director of the Voter Education Project, which was part of the Southern Regional Council. It had a network of blacks and whites working together uh, to build a sense of community uh, in the South. Well, uh, Alexis Herman and I were very happy to be in uh, Southern Regional Council. It provided a very um, comfortable and supportive environment for this experimental project. The Lillian Smith Awards are great awards. I felt fabulous getting it several years ago. The people that get it today will feel fabulous because what it is, it is a symbol 
of writing well. Their uh, Peabody winning, uh, Peabody award winning work, uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken, is just a fabulous indication, I think, and reflection of the kinds of contributions they, they make and the work that they do. SRC remains a vital link for all who work for social justice in the region. Today's programs continue to focus on fair representation and education reform, while new initiatives like Partnerships for Racial Unity reflect the changing demographics of the region. The Southern Regional Council has, for the last 79 years, pursued a policy of trying to broaden civic participation. The uh, campaign and finance issue is a critical issue with us. It's a voting rights issue at its heart. I work with probably one of the finest staffs in the South. Um, these are folks who, um, who come to this work with their eyes wide open. They know that we have a vision. If they leave middle school with a successful, positive education experience and at least some kind of idea, a goal about their future, then that is going to greatly enhance their chances for success in high school. Results of SRC's national polling on racial attitudes show that nearly half, listen to this, nearly half of white males support affirmative action. This is another thing that's been mythologized in the press. <laughs> The South has changed because of SRC and the work that it's done and all of the people who've contributed to that. But now the, the council recognizes that we have to find a way to involve everyone in the community, Latinos, Asians, and bring them to the table to work on this new vision for our region. Racism is ever present even in this time. And it needs to be addressed vigorously. Uh, and it needs a biracial organization to do that. You are the model of what we must do. And we have to take your story to the rest of the country. And we ask you to continue to do what you're doing and reach out, broaden and widen the circle.